What's going on? Alex here at Movements for Life. Another batch, morsels coming at you. We're staying in our superset theme. This is workout 5B. So again, this is echoing the workout we first did with our quad sets, so workout five. So this is 5B, superset format. Let's get right into it with the warm up. All right, I'm gonna start out with a nice little lower extremity mobility and scap and core activation with the bear crawl. So from the bear crawl, um, I like to go up onto the balls of the feet so that I can really focus in on arching my lower back and lengthening my hamstrings from the hips down, as opposed to keeping the heels down. It's going to pull the posterior chain so much more from the calves, it'll make it that much harder to keep your pelvis tilted anteriorly. All right, so you can always play around with both. My preference, up on the toes, so that you can really stay arched out at the lower back. And then from there, just go into this contralateral opposite arm, opposite leg gait. And I'm obviously out of the frame. And then from here, I'm just actually gonna also go backwards. So backwards is a little bit different because I have to push through my hand that rocks my body weight back into my hamstring. All right, so play around with both forwards and backwards and see how that feels for you, but super effective on the hamstrings, behind the knee going down to the calf. All right, nice little posterior chain stretch. All right, from here, I'm gonna go into what I call a rolling side plank. And I like to position my arms both internally rotated so that from here, I can just get into a side plank. I like to rotate my palm, my thumb back, so I get external rotation at the shoulder, enhancing what's going on at the pec, all right? So something about like, yay, all right? So you're pretty much alternating from one side plank to the other, getting onto each side, all right? So I'm allowing my feet to roll onto each side, as I get into posture, I'm pushing just like a traditional side plank setup. My left arm here is pushing down to the ground. I'm making sure my shoulder's not in my ear, so I'm actively pushing down and away from my ear so I can maintain a nice long neck posture here. And what that does is that just helps connect the dots from shoulder all the way down to hip. All right, so this gets into your lateral line super effectively. Go for 10 each side, by the way. And now from here, let's get right into it. So, super set, double under your system. We have two doozies here. First one especially. It's an alternating lunge jump. Very challenging plyometric, very quasi. I like to throw in a little bit of some opposite arms here, some contralateral arm motion, so I can get some nice thoracic rotation, so I have a nice dissipation of force as I land. All right, so crank out 20 of these. Again, very knee dominant here. Doesn't mean that my hip musculature is not working, but a lot of knee, a lot of deceleration. This is a doozy, all right? Crank those out, challenge you to get 20 or 10 on each side. All right, from there, gonna go into some climbers. I personally don't like doing a lot of explosive climbers for energy system. Every now and again, I go down and do it. Today's one of them. Um, I typically like doing climbers on the slower, more stability side for more of that core emphasis. All right, so I'm gonna use a foam roller, believe it or not. You can do these on the ground, you can do these on the med ball or up on a step or depending on your abilities, you might need to go higher incline. So by doing this on a roller, I'm gonna change things a little bit because the roller is gonna be rolling in the sagittal plane, which is how I'm lined up with this. So it's actually going to challenge my stability a little bit more. All right, so 20 climbers right up the middle here, again, I like these more for stability, but not a bad thing just to throw it in for a little bit of some prone energy system every now and again. All right, crank out 20. Quick, fly through them. All right, what do we got next? Lower extremity. So this is exercise one on lower body, and this is a goblet squat to a march. So I'm gonna use a kettlebell. You can use a dumbbell, anything you can get up into that high carry. So from here, Fold up into that squat, and I'm gonna finish with a nice march, alternating pattern. So really locking out my knee, locking out my hip, getting into full hip extension. So I'm using my glute to create some nice balance through my hip. So as I'm in this uh, flamingo single leg balance, my right glute now is locked up, so I'm getting a gentle lengthening 
through my anterior hip. Changes things a little bit. Gives you some nice balance that to focus on. And it gets just a little bit more hip involvement in a knee dominant move, be it the squat. All right, so shoot for anywhere between 12 to 20 there, depending on your abilities and what kind of weight you have. All right, we have an anterior lunge here with a contralateral reach down at the ankle. So reach down here. When I get into this forward lunge reaching down, you can see my angle of my torso, right? So what that's gonna do is that's gonna get my right glute and hamstring involved quite a bit more as I decelerate, slow down, and then change my direction, getting back upright. If I stay more upright, maybe let's say reach subtly more to my knee, can you see how I am more vertically aligned with my torso? That shifts the focus more to my quads, so it's more knee dominant, all right? So you can be systematic and thorough, and you can implement one or the other, when you do these workouts per rounds, or you can alternate sets. So you can play around however you want to do it. But this is a opposite arm reach down, going for glute hamstring of the front leg. All right, again, 12 to 20. That could be a doozy. You could definitely make that a strength-based move by getting into some heavier weights, slowing things down. You can go more mid-level, mid-level weight, a little quicker tempo and you can start making that a little bit more explosive. All right, upper body one. We have a push up to a pike. We got some Alex favorites here today. Even in the next one, all right? So remember, push up position is a dynamic plank, right? So my abdominals are super active here. So I'm dropping into a push up and then I'm going to pike up out of it. So scaps are compressing on the way down. As I push through, I'm really making sure I follow through with my scaps. All right, and this particular push-up variation gets into a downward dog. So just like that bear crawl warm-up, I'm pushing my hands through. I'm arching my lower back, so I'm getting a fantastic stretch in my hamstrings. That piking posture also finishes that push-up, so you get that nice push through, that nice extension, and really, really awesome, awesome stuff for your scaps, your upper back posture. So believe it or not, this is a great exercise for an anti-sit type of program so that I can really focus on lengthening through the chest, pushing through, and getting into that, into that thoracic spine. All right, next one. We're keeping things going here with some good stuff here. So this is gonna be a prone one-arm dumbbell kickback. There's a huge, huge ROI on this one. So you're gonna get a lot of love on this. So I'm in a prone position. I have one arm more towards the center of my body, not out to the side. Feet are nice and wide. From there, you gotta be really mindful of the position of your pelvis. So what I like to say with the belly button, have it point straight down, all right? What's typically gonna happen is the hip's gonna to wanna to open up as a bailout. Try to keep that down, especially once you get the weight in your hand. And now from here, you're going through that kickback. And as much as you have a lot of tricep activation, the really big limiting factor is the connection of your stabilizing arm to your abdominal wall. Super, super tough. Absolutely love this one. Crowd favorite. You can play around with the angles here. I did utilize a step just to elevate me a little bit. This could be done on the ground. This could go even higher. So this could be totally scalable depending on your abilities, all right? And what you have access to as well. So staircases work really well because staircases are just built-in plyo boxes, technically speaking. So there's a, a lot you could do with stairs, assuming you have stairs in your house. All right, we got our last supersets here. So core one and core two, we have a... Ball roll, going prone roll. We want transverse point on this, so we got a little frisky by rolling in a circular pattern. So it's just a variation of the traditional ball roll, but the setup just like any other plank, a little bit more sideways here. So I'm pushing through my forearms, 
So my upper back is activated. I have a nice high belly button, a hip tuck posture. All right, so from here, I'm gonna move the ball in a circular pattern. So I'm going counterclockwise and shoot to get 10 on each side. As I go through the roll, I wanna be really mindful of the rest of my body. The only thing really moving are my arms. I wanna make sure I'm not twisting my pelvis, I'm not dropping, bailing out through my lower back. So can I maintain that hollow body abdominal posture, right? Oh, these are awesome. Super, super tough. And then last but not least, gonna finish off with a reverse crunch. I'll use a kettlebell as my anchor. Uh, furniture works really well here. Just make sure that it is a stable piece that you're not going to drag and pull depending on how much help you need, all right? But this is your anchor to your abdominal wall. So your arms ideally shouldn't be flared out to the sides, okay? Elbow staying tighter is going to communicate better to your abdominal wall, making its way down your lateral line, so your serratus, your obliques, and connecting and anchoring to your abdominal wall. So from here, I'm going to look to maintain a very compact leg posture as I bring my knees to chest and then allowing my pelvis to roll towards my rib cage. If this is challenging for you, there's a couple different things you could do. You could use the weight of your legs and feet if you need help to get your hips higher have your feet go over your head and your face more, and that'll help pull the rest of your lower body along for the ride, and then you can just slowly reverse all the way down, okay? So that's only if you have a hard time staying tough. It's a nice little kind of cheat so that you can get stronger because the reverse crunch, this is a challenging, challenging move, right? So ideally I wanna stay compact as I go into my upward phase and down phase, all right? So stay really, really tight. Again, if I need some help, I can use my lower leg, get it way over my head, and it'll just, you'll feel it, it'll pull the rest of your pelvis along. All right, so look to incorporate this one. It is a great, great exercise. There's a lot of reverse crunch variations from on ground to alternating leg reaches, and then obviously working our way into some hanging variations, which this is a really nice lead up for. All right, but enjoy these awesome supersets. There's some great moves here. That push one, that push up the pike to that prone one arm kickback, give that one a whirl. Great combo. Enjoy, see you next time.